Good morning. Good morning. Today is Monday, December 30th, and I'm having knee surgery. We're about to leave. We all overslept. It's so early. I have to be at the hospital today at 4.45, so the exact same time as my last knee surgery, which I actually requested. I had a really good experience having like the first surgery of the day. I was able to leave the hospital the same day and I was hoping I could get that appointment again this time and I did. I am bringing my crutches. I've got them ready over there. Um, my brace is ready to go and then I just have a backpack that doesn't have much stuff in it. Last time I brought so much stuff. This time I'm only bringing a nightgown to wear after the surgery. I learned from last time that that was really the only thing I was capable of putting on my body. There was no way I was getting any pants on no matter how big they were. I just didn't have the agility to get those on after the surgery last time. So just a nightgown, water bottle, and then like my wallet and the camera and stuff. I should also mention that last night I had to stop drinking and eating at midnight, so I did. That's one of the reasons why I wanted the earliest appointment of the day because if you stop eating at midnight and your appointment's at 4.45 in the morning, it's really not that big of a deal, but if it was like later in the day, I would start to get cranky. So there's that. I wanted to mention that. And then I also wanted to mention that I have a ton of videos at this point about this knee surgery. I'm just going to link the playlist for them in the description and at the end of this video. This is my second time having this four-part reconstructive knee surgery. Just having it on my other knee this time. We're going. <laughs> Late. I like being late. Before someone like walks in here and it's real weird that we're filming, I'm going to show this paper dress that we didn't show last time. There's a hose hooked up to it. We got the air conditioning turned on. This is the greatest. I'm sweating, but not as much as last time. This is the worst part, as always, the IV. It was really good though. It, like, it really didn't hurt. She's eating, that's a good thing. <laughs> good sign. I'm awake. Everything went really well, I think, actually. I don't know. Can we even see the doctor? I feel a lot more conscious than I did last time. Waking up was a lot better. I didn't throw up this time, which was great news. We did like a boatload of precautions for that. They gave me a ton of drugs to not get sick from the anesthesia this time, which I appreciate. I feel like totally normal like in my brain, but they're gonna give me some more drugs, so I feel like I'm gonna probably pass out after that happens. My whole leg is numb. That's normal, I'd rather it be numb. I can, I can feel the pain. Um, they said that the nerve block doesn't stop all of the pain, like in different parts of your body. So like, I can really feel where like the broken bone in my like shin, just under my knee is, like I can feel that pain already. So that's mostly why I think that I'll be taking some drugs. Because <laughs> for the most part, I feel okay right now. I'm getting a little bit of na nausea every time I like move, I feel a little bit sick, but for the most part, everything went well. Was it faster? Did they bring you guys back here faster oh, last time? A little bit. Hello! 
I wanted to follow up that little like vlog from the day that I had surgery just kind of explaining the whole day of my second knee surgery and then I'm gonna do an update of like the first week of recovery after the surgery. I had this exact same surgery done last year and posted some videos about it so I do have a playlist of my other knee surgery videos. I'll link that below and at the end of this video and I'm gonna continue adding to that playlist with my second knee surgery. So I had reconstructive knee surgery on my left knee on Monday, December 30th. One day short of a year from the exact same surgery on my right knee. Since my surgery was on a Monday, I had to call the hospital that I was gonna be having the surgery at the Friday before to find out what time I was gonna have to report to the hospital. And they told me 4.45 a.m., which I was actually really excited about. That was the exact same time that I had my surgery last year and I knew that I was going to have a way better chance of being able to leave the hospital the same day if I had the first surgery of the day. So I was really excited about that. The person that I talked to on the phone during that conversation last year told me to make sure I got really hydrated the day before the surgery. No one said anything about it this year, but since I remembered, I made sure to drink a ton of water the Sunday before the surgery just because that makes it easier for the IV and the IV is my least favorite part of the surgery so I want to make sure that that goes as easy as possible so I made sure to drink a ton of water the night before. So I arrived to Capitol Health in Pennington, New Jersey on Monday, December 30th at 4.45 a.m. and I got checked in and then I was brought right back to the room to get prepped for the surgery. I changed into a paper gown, the same thing that I had last year that has all sorts of holes in it that can be hooked up to like a personal heating and cooling unit, which I just love. I tried to get that on camera this year, so hopefully that actually turned out because it's just so freaking cool. I couldn't have any jewelry, no undergarments whatsoever, nothing, just this paper dress. And then they had me pee in a cup for a pregnancy test. Just like last year, there were a ton of different nurses dealing with me during the prep for the surgery. And everyone at Capital Health, in my experience, has been so pleasant. I was definitely a lot more nervous during the prep for the surgery last year. And I was like talking uncontrollably and sweating uncontrollably because I was so nervous. But this year I felt so much more relaxed just because I knew what to expect. But the nurses had a ton of like medical history questions to ask me and then they hooked me up to an IV and took a blood sample. After I was all ready and prepped for the surgery, they let my parents and Chris come into that prep room and they were only in there for a couple minutes and my surgeon came in and we talked to him last year. We had like a hundred thousand questions to ask him about like the specifics of the surgery. But since we've all been through this already, we didn't have as many questions this time. So then the anesthesiologist came in and I made sure to tell him and all of the nurses that I got sick from the anesthesia after I woke up from my surgery last year. So I was given a ton of anti-nausea medications prior to the surgery to hopefully stop me from getting sick after the surgery this year. After I got sick from the anesthesia last year, whatever nurse was like standing there with me as I was waking up gave me this little tube. I think they call it Queez Ease. It's like this smelly thing that's supposed to like help alleviate nausea, but I'm actually really sensitive to smells and something like that will induce nausea for me. So I also made sure to tell all the nurses and the anesthesiologists that if I did get sick, I didn't want to have that because when you're like half dead, you can't really say like, hi, uh, no thank you. Like I didn't really know what was happening the first time. So I just wanted to make sure they all knew no smells for me if I start getting sick. I was given a nerve block again this year. No one really like asked me if I wanted to have it or not. They all just said, did you have it last time? And I said, yeah. And then they're like, all right, then we'll just do it again. So the anesthesiologist administers the nerve block by using an ultrasound machine to find the nerve in my thigh and then inject the nerve block into that nerve. I don't, does that make any sense? and it totally numbs the entire leg. So last year I was completely knocked out by the time I was given the nerve block. You get that once you're in the operating room, but this time I was not knocked out yet. So I did get to experience that. I kind of remember it. I remember being able to see the ultrasound machine and they were like, see, you can see the nerve. And I like didn't know what I was looking at. And I remember that needle being 
super uncomfortable but then i was asleep like two seconds later so i don't really remember the surgery went well i don't know exactly how long it took this year i know last year it took around two hours so i'm just gonna assume that it took the same amount of time this year and i didn't get sick from the anesthesia so all the anti-nausea drugs that they gave me before the surgery worked and that was super exciting i was prescribed percocet last year as my painkiller to take at home after the surgery and i was given percocet in the hospital after the surgery as well last year and I got really sick from that too. I've never had anything like that before and I just was completely out of it. I was out of it in the hospital and I was out of it at home. I got sick from it at home. I did not have a good experience so I made sure to tell my surgeon about that like way prior to the surgery and he prescribed me a different narcotic this time called Nucinta. It's supposed to have better results with people who get nauseous from Percocet. So I was going to be taking that at home after the surgery and then I was given Vicodin in the hospital instead of that Percocet that they had given me last year. So from the second that I woke up from the surgery, I felt a thousand percent better than I did when I woke up from the surgery last year. I actually felt like a human which was really surprising. When I woke up last year, I felt like I couldn't stay awake. I could barely form sentences. The Percocet just had me like all sorts of messed up. So I had such a better experience this time straight away. I was expecting to have the exact same four part reconstructive knee surgery that I had last year on my other knee. And for those of you who are new here, I have been having trouble with my knees my entire life. My knees have been dislocating on a way too frequent basis my entire life. My left knee started giving out when I was four years old and my right knee started giving out when I was in high school. And none of the doctors that I went to when I was younger were able to tell me what the problem was. So I just kind of dealt with it. It wasn't until last year that we finally figured out what's wrong with me I was just walking in a parking lot and my left knee gave out which was not unusual and as I started to fall my right knee gave out and that was the first time both of them have given out at the same time before normally they just dislocate go back into their place and then I move on with my life but this time it was different my right knee just hurt so bad and I couldn't put any pressure on it without my kneecap slipping right back out of place and that had never happened before so that prompted me to go to a doctor again for the first time in like 10 years and that's when I met my surgeon who told me that the alignment of my kneecaps is just totally wrong my knees didn't grow the correct way it wasn't from an injury or like a sports accident or anything they just didn't grow correctly from when I was a baby so my right knee which I would have considered to be the better of my two knees because that one only had started giving out in high school and the other one was giving out since I was four that one was operated on first last year just because of the injury like it was all messed up after that fall last Last year and I had a four part reconstructive knee surgery on that knee. So the four parts of that surgery are a tibia tubercle osteotomy. So this is when part of the tibia right under the kneecap is broken and then moved into the place that it's supposed to be. Realigning the bone is supposed to improve the movement of the kneecap and then the bone is screwed into its new place. So a big part of the recovery is healing a broken bone. The second part of the surgery is medial patellofemoral ligament reconstruction with allograft. So this is where a ligament in my knee, the medial patellofemoral ligament, is replaced with a donor ligament to treat kneecap instability. The third part is lateral lengthening, which corrects knee misalignment. And then the fourth part of the surgery that I had last year was osteochondral allograft transplantation. This is where the damaged cartilage on the backside of my kneecap was scraped out and then replaced with donor cartilage. The cartilage on the backside of my knee that I had surgery on last year was so messed up. Since that was the knee that had only been giving out since I was in high school, I expected the knee that had been giving out since I was four years old to be way more damaged, but it actually wasn't. My left knee, the knee that I just had surgery on, was so loose in there that when it would dislocate, it wasn't rubbing up against anything. So the cartilage on the back side of the knee wasn't damaged at all. So I actually didn't have to have that part of the surgery done this year. My incisions were stitched on the inside and then glued on the outside and then taped and covered in cotton and then like a huge ace bandage and then my knee brace. And it had to stay completely covered in all the bandages for the first four days after the surgery. After the surgery, when I was still in the hospital, there was a drain in my knee 
So it's like this whoopee cushion shaped thing. It's clear, filled with blood. It's got this tube that goes into my skin, into the knee to drain out any extra fluid. I had a really big problem with this strain last year. The nurse who removed it from my knee last year yanked on that thing so hard and so long. When she ripped that thing out of my knee, I had so much pain. And my leg was numbed from the nerve block. And that spot was the most painful spot in my knee during the recovery after that. So I was really nervous to have the drain pulled out this year. So I talked to the nurses, like explained to them how traumatic it was last year. And the nurse who took it out this year was so gentle. There was no pain involved whatsoever. I don't think there is supposed to be pain involved in that at all. So I'm really happy that it went a lot better this year. A knee surgery like this calls for a really big knee brace that can be locked straight, but then can also be unlocked so you can wear it and bend your knee at the same time. I'll just insert a picture of my brace from this time. So the brace that I had last year was not the right size for me. It went all the way from my ankle all the way literally like up into my crotch. It was a one size fits all sort of thing. Like people way taller than me were also using this brace and I was having a lot of difficulty with it. I was wearing it before the surgery because I was injured and I knew that it wasn't the right size for me. Even after arguing with many people about it not being the correct fit for me, it took me almost peeing all over it in the hospital, needing like many nurses to help me in the bathroom after my surgery last year for them to see like, oh, she actually can't use the bathroom when she's wearing that brace. We need to do something about it. So we ended up having to wait in the hospital last year a while for someone to come and like size the brace to my body. It was just a mess. So I wanted to take care of that before the surgery this time. So I had talked to my surgeon about it way ahead of time and I met with someone in the orthotics department at his office to get a different brace this year. They almost gave me the exact same brace. It was going to be a mess. I didn't want to have to fight with anyone about it, but I ended up with a brace that fits my body so much better. does the exact same job as the one from last year. It just actually fits me. So I already had that taken care of. My goal was to get out of that hospital faster than last year. So I had that brace in my possession before the surgery, and then I had to bring it to the hospital with me. And then when I woke up, it was on my leg. And the problem the problem with the brace is it's a ton of foam and metal and ice cannot penetrate through that brace whatsoever. So they have you all like bandaged up and then put the brace on there and then they attempt to ice your knee down with like this big foam thing that has ice packs in it and the ice cannot reach the knee at all, whatever. I mentioned it to all of the nurses and my doctor like that's just silly like Maybe there should be like a different procedure there to get ice to the knee, but like they don't care. So there's that. I think we were in the hospital for 11 hours this time. So we did get out of there one hour earlier than last year. A lot of the time this year was just spent waiting. The nurses were checking the levels of fluid in my drain, just to, I guess, make sure that everything was like coming out of there, that I wasn't still bleeding. And then they also wanted to make sure that I was able to pee after the surgery. I guess that is like a side effect from the anesthesia that you might have trouble using the bathroom. I didn't have that problem at all last year. Like no one even said a word about that last year, but I also didn't have a problem with it this year either. So they were really just waiting for that drain to be like whatever levels they needed it to be. So then we got to leave the hospital the same day, which was exciting. I will say that it's probably best to leave the hospital when that nerve block is still kicking because like it could be super, super, super painful if you waited and that nerve block had worn off. But the problem that I have, and I mentioned this before in other videos, is that the nerve block doesn't just numb the knee. It numbs the entire leg all the way down to the foot. And the problem is the foot. So for me, my leg is locked completely straight and I'm on crutches. So I can't like bend my knee away from the ground, but I'm not allowed to put any pressure on it. So it's this like crazy thing where I'm like trying to walk on the crutches my foot is totally touching the floor, but I can't feel it. I can't tell if I'm putting any pressure on it or not. And that's freaky. That's like actually pretty scary. During the first couple days of recovery, it's just so, so spooky to move around because the foot is totally numb. I definitely wasn't interested in finding out how painful 
the first couple days of recovery were going to be without the nerve block so I did get it but I really just don't like that whole numb foot thing and last year and this year the anesthesiologists both told me that the nerve block would last anywhere from 12 to 24 hours but both times my foot was numb until like the third day after the surgery so I don't know if like the foot is just like the last thing to like gain consciousness again but it's really scary. I hardly remember the first week of my recovery from last year I was in so much pain and I was so sick from the Percocet last year that I was just like knocked out the whole time But this first week of recovery was a hundred percent different. I felt great I don't want to sugarcoat this though. This knee surgery recovery is not fun. It is really painful The first two weeks are really really tough, but it was miserable last year I had never felt anything like that in my entire life and so I don't know if I'm just used to it now like I've already been through it I have some experience with that sort of pain but really I just don't think the level of pain was anything like it was last year because I was getting so sick from the Percocet last year I did stop taking it after like the second day of recovery which was not good I was not in a good place last year I was in so much pain because I was going without any painkillers so I do think that the narcotic that I was on this year the new Syntha definitely helped me manage my pain a lot more in the beginning but I really don't think my body likes narcotics because I was not feeling great and I stopped taking it after the second day too and the pain that I was feeling without any drugs this year compared to last year was like night and day. I couldn't function at all last year and I was actually feeling a little bit bored during the first couple days of my recovery. My pain level was pretty minimal. Something that I think played a really big part in the lesser amount of pain this time around was ice. So last year I was so afraid to move my leg. I was so afraid to take off the brace. So ice wasn't really getting to my knee at all. But now that I've had experience Experience with this exact same surgery I knew that I would be in a safe position to take my knee brace off if I was laying in bed I wasn't doing anything just laying in bed not wearing the knee brace and then I covered my entire leg with frozen bags of peas that's like my biggest tip frozen peas is the absolute best ice option so I just had my entire leg covered with frozen peas for like the whole week I just kept it constantly cold and keeping it cold for me definitely decreases the pain way better than any of the painkillers so my surgery was on Monday and then by Friday I was able to take off all of the bandages and get the incision wet so I have a different type of incision this year than last year. I still have the same one straight down on my knee but and then I have one on like the inside of my leg like next to the knee but those had to stay covered up to like allow it to heal and avoid infections for the first couple days. Getting in the shower is definitely the most difficult thing for me. It was super difficult last year. Last year I spent a lot of the first week just like washing my hair in the sink and like doing a sponge bath sort of thing but that takes a lot of energy to stand with all the weight on one leg. So I did try to figure out how to get myself safely into the shower. We have like a bathtub shower combination thing and you gotta like step over into the tub. And so I'm really utilizing the like the shower stools that I talked about in my knee surgery recovery essentials video. The shower stool, if you get anything, get yourself some frozen peas and a shower stool and you'll probably be fine. So it's just been difficult and it was difficult until like week seven last year I'm not going to stand up in the shower until I'm allowed to put all of the weight of my body on my leg. So it's going to be a while until I'm standing in the shower. But I'm taking a regular shower just sitting on the stool in the shower. That Friday was also the first day of physical therapy for me as well. A tip that I haven't said in any of my knee surgery videos yet is if you know that you're gonna be having knee surgery, you are most likely gonna have to go to physical therapy afterwards. So talk to your doctor, your surgeon beforehand, before you have your surgery. Find out what day you're gonna be allowed to start your physical therapy and how many days a week they want you to go to physical therapy. I didn't have that information until after I woke up from the surgery last year. So getting an appointment on the first day that I was allowed to start going to physical therapy like was already pretty impossible because it was only a couple days away. And I had to wait a couple extra days for one to be available after I was already allowed to start going to physical therapy. And I think that slowed down my recovery a little bit. And then it wasn't as easy to get the consistency in the appointments that I wanted. So since I knew to expect it this year, 
here. I made my appointments for physical therapy way ahead of time so I could get the first day that I was allowed to go to physical therapy appointment and then I was able to make appointments for like the whole next month just so I could get the consistency of appointments that I wanted. I enjoyed physical therapy last year but it definitely kicked my butt. My whole entire leg was completely out of shape last year since the whole thing was sparked from an injury. I wasn't really using that leg for a really long time before the surgery so it took a really long time to get my leg back in shape and I was also just so terrified to move my leg and bend my leg during the first week of recovery before I went to physical therapy for the first time last year and I think keeping it so stiff and so straight during those first couple days really had something to do with how the rest of my recovery went. So this time I knew not to keep my leg so stiff during the first few days of recovery before I went to physical therapy. I knew that I was allowed to bend it to 30 degrees as long as I was like in bed and like the whole situation was safe so that's all I bent it to. I didn't push it any further so I I was very surprised when I had my first physical therapy appointment and I could already bend it to 67 degrees. That was so shocking to me. I was stunned because at that point last year I was barely getting it to 30 degrees and it was difficult. It was so hard and I did not have any problems getting it to 67 degrees this time so that was amazing. Going into this surgery I had a really big goal to make the recovery go a lot faster than last year but it turns out my knee like already had that plan for itself because 67 degrees was a lot for the first day. Like I mentioned, the first couple days after my surgery, I was starting to feel a little bit bored just because my pain level was so minimum and there wasn't really anything that I could do. But the real pain really set in after the first day of physical therapy. This happened last year too, so I knew to expect it. Even though I'm not doing anything to hurt my knee at physical therapy, that first appointment really just like spark something in there and that night and like the next couple days the knee is just like extra swollen if that's even possible it's like its own heat source it's so hot and just hurts so bad that's when i really started to feel the pain of this knee surgery recovery was after that first therapy appointment so i was glad that that was on a friday so i had then the whole weekend to kind of like recover from that because that was really painful so ice really has to be my best friend since physical therapy started but i'm really happy with how that first pt appointment went i plan on doing more updates about this knee than i did last year just to kind of document everything i really didn't expect this experience to be any different than last year so i didn't really think i was gonna have much to say but it has already been 100% different than last year. I'm learning very quickly that knee surgery recovery is going to be different for everyone. I had almost the exact same surgery by the exact same surgeon in the exact same hospital almost one year apart from each other and they're completely different recoveries already just in the first week. So imagine from one person to the next with a different surgeon, it could be a totally different experience for you than how mine is going. So I'm glad to be able to have this like different perspective on it and give a different experience. Thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my future knee update videos. And follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are down below.